to include sheet sets, comforter sets, blankets in its original packaging, of course. The, donations, the donation date has been extended to Sunday, May 1st. Please see Sister Sonia L. Fleming, president of Julia L. Gilliard WMS, for more information. This morning, we're delighted that we will fellowship our new members uh, this morning, and we celebrate them, and we thank God uh, for the journey that God has placed them on here at Ebenezer. Our church conference will be held at Ebenezer on May 2nd, 2022 at 6 p.m., just before our monthly official board meeting. Keep that in mind, May 2nd, 2022 at 6 p.m., just prior to our official board meeting, we will go into church conference. As always, you may contact the office uh, for any additional information. I have a note here that this is in recognition of one of our dear and outstanding members, Mrs. Marcella Goodwin. She joined Ebenezer on the first Sunday on January 7th, 1962. And at that time, the Reverend B.J. Finkley, uh, my presiding elder and former mentor, was the pastor at that time. And uh, she had strong leaders in the church that guided her along the way, such as people like uh, Mrs. Funderburg and uh, Mama Julia and Lita Frazier. And uh, she has joined many ministries during her time here at Ebenezer, and she has been chairperson of many organizations and programs, and she sang on several choirs. She also started the Golden Bell Choir that she played for. <laughs> Amen. And directed uh, uh, with Evelyn Coleman. And after being out during the time of COVID, uh, your church family, we welcome you back, Mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you for 60 years of service to Ebenezer Church. Amen. And to God Almighty, may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. Let us go now into praise and worship. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. It wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. Come on, quiet. It wasn't. The nails that held him to the cross, he could have come down, but the world still be lost. Was so high, it wasn't the nail. The nails that held him to the cross, he could have come down, oh, 
of the world. The ransom was so high. Only pay that call. It wasn't the nail that held him. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised with our iniquities. By his stripes we were healed, as he hung there at Calvary. He was lifted up from the earth in order to draw all men. It was love, love. That kept him there, and that same love that covered our sins. Oh, yes, it was. He could have come down, still below the red line. Yes, it was. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. No greater, greater love than given to anyone. The Son gave His life, and it wasn't taken by men. He had power. In his hand, and that power to raise a fucking hell. Oh, then, hell, then, oh, could have come down. Oh, the rat. Oh, it wasn't the nail that held him. Come on and put your hands together. I want to tell you a little something. Although the Lord died on that cross, he bled and died for you and me. He carried our sins away. But I want you to know that on that third day, they rolled the stone away. And Jesus declared that all power, all power was in his hands. And we want to tell you a little something. Jesus had that. Yeah, he had that. I know the anointing. Yes, he did. Oh, power! Saving power! Power to give right! Power to live right! Oh, power! That saving power! Unlifting power! That giving power, 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 that saving power, ungiving power, low power, power. It wasn't the nail. 
It wasn't the now. It wasn't the now. It wasn't the now. Tell them to. Woo. in the name of Jesus just to thank you and to bless your holy name thank you for this day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it Lord we just thank you and bless you and praise you because we know that there is none like you we pray your presence your peace in this sanctuary this morning and Lord give us minds and hearts to serve you and to be in unity one with the other. Help us to operate as the body of Christ. Your word said we are the body of Christ. Help us to walk in faith and love and joy in every piece of the spirit, every fruit of the spirit. Help us, oh God, fill us with your spirit that we may walk right and talk right and be all that you called us to be. We lift up every person on this sanctuary this morning, those listening by radio or live streaming or whatever. Lord, we ask that you would touch, heal, deliver, and set free like only you can. Do more, oh God, in the lives of your people than we can think or imagine. Because we are salt and light. And Lord, when we look around, we know that the world needs salt and light. Help us, O oh God, to help those who don't know you and the pardoning of your sin. Bless the sick, the shattered, those bereaved, those incarcerated, those who don't know you and the pardoning of your sin. We lift up pastors, ministers, ministries to you all over the world. Touch them, O oh God. Help us to realize that you are God, and besides you, there is no other and that we can do nothing without you. So continue to walk with us, O oh God, to talk with us. Show yourself strong and mighty. Use us like only you can. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. And O oh God, when you've done all that we've asked you to do, we'll be so careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory because you are worthy. And we know that our help is in the Lord. Amen. Amen, and thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. John 20, 19 through 21. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you give if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands, in his hands the print of the nails, or put my finger in the print of the nails, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hands here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. There is power in the word, amen. <clears throat> all stand and sing that hymn together alas and did my savior bleed
is just, just a prayer away. Never too busy. Every word you say, call him up. Not a day. God is just, yeah, yeah. God is just. Just look at Daniel. Down in the lion's den. Jesus, you know he stepped right in. Look at Job. When all he had was gone, Jesus gave him more than he had before God is. Yeah, yeah. Just look at Daniel. Down in a lion's den, Jesus. You know he stepped right on in. Look at Job. When all he had was gone, Jesus gave him more than he had before God is. Yeah, yeah, God is. God is just, just a prayer away. Just one prayer, God is just one prayer away, one prayer away, one prayer away, and God is just one prayer away. Have you ever tried him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One prayer away, one prayer away. Just one prayer away, one prayer away. When you get sick, one prayer away. All you gotta do is call him, one prayer away. He'll heal your body, one prayer away. He'll heal your body, one prayer away. Look at Job, one prayer away. Just look at Daniel, one prayer away. Five thousand hungry, souls he fed. Just a prayer away, just one prayer away. Prayer and mothers, one prayer away. Praying and fathers, one prayer away. He healed the sick. He raised the dead, one a prayer away, one a prayer away, down on your knees, one a prayer away. He will keep you, he will hear you, one prayer away, just one prayer away. Just look at Daniel, just look at Job, pray and mother, pray and father. One prayer away, one prayer away. God is just, yeah, yeah. God is just.
Just one prayer away. Just one prayer away. And God is. Yeah. Turn to somebody and tell him he's just a prayer away. We thank God for his presence here today. For he is in the midst. For the scriptures say that wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. Turn to somebody and tell him he's in the midst. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. 2 Kings, chapter 4. And I will read the first six verses for your hearing. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. And so Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? She said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. And then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it out, pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. And so she went from him and shut the door behind her. And her sons who brought the vessels to her, she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her sons, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. And so the oil ceased. I want to preach this morning from the subject, overwhelmed. Anybody here in this room knows what it's like to feel overwhelmed. Well, you're in the right place. All of us are familiar with the many challenges that we face on a daily basis. Some of our challenges are mental, emotional, and even spiritual. And so like most people, we try to find a way to manage our stress. 
But in our attempt to try to manage our stress, we often feel like we're buried under or beneath a weight that is too heavy and too great to bear. Like most of us, we never really know how much we can bear or how long we can maintain a vertical posture when life overwhelms us. Think about the problems we are currently trying to manage or solve. Think for a moment about the mental, emotional, and physical, and even spiritual resources that you have depleted. After battling the consequences of COVID-19, financial downfall, and a mental health crisis, so we come today accepting the realization that we do not have within us all that we need to manage our challenges and to return to some level of normalcy in our lives. What we have come to learn is that money and possessions cannot solve all of our problems. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this church. Problems may appear as opportunities and blessings, but after the truth is revealed, they can leave us feeling overwhelmed. Also, we must face the reality that our problems have forced us to face the reality that we cannot solve all of our problems on our own. Some today may need prayer, counseling, a new exercise plan, or perhaps just a vacation. Just to be able to deal with the reality of feeling overwhelmed in some area of our lives our challenges have gotten the best of us but on a personal note all of us at some point in our life's journey will come to accept the reality of being overwhelmed even though our faith is unchanging and our belief is without question, some of what we encounter in this life challenges us, tests every cell, every fiber in our being and life. And this is why faith in God is on the decline. Oh, I didn't expect to get any amens on that. Many are changing their understanding about God and are questioning their beliefs in God and in his miracles. Some among us believe the season of miracles are past. They're over. Some are just left feeling overwhelmed. Many have come to believe that this new era of ministry and Christian service does not include miracles. Even though our blessings and our deliverance from sin is out of our reach, so this is why there is no reason to give in to our feelings of being overwhelmed. In our text, I hear the cry and the groaning of a woman. 
a woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. And she went unto, unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, but the creditor has come. Does the creditor knock on your door during COVID? Called you on the phone? Sent you a letter with a window in it? <laughs> because she couldn't pay. The creditor has now come. Not to take her furniture or TV, but to take her two sons. To be slaves! She was no doubt feeling overwhelmed. I just wonder if anybody's ever been there before. Those of you who didn't say amen, when you get in your cars, you can shout it then. <laughs> and so Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? She said, thine handmaid hath not a thing in the house except a pot of oil. All the resources she needed for her survival were out of her reach and beyond her budget. This may be why he instructed her to go borrow three vessels from your neighbors. Bring back some empty vessels and borrow not a few, but get all you can get. In fact, bring all that you can physically carry. When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and, and shall pour out into all those vessels. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. And so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out the oil that she possessed in her vessel. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring more. Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And then she came and told the man of God what she had in her possession. Now, I could imagine he must have told her that her resources were inadequate. And your challenges are great, but I, but I want you to do as I command. And here are the instructions he gave her. He said, go sell the oil, pay thy debt. Thou and thy children shall then find rest. And so, beloved, let us look a little closer at this text. Because first we come to discover that the problem took on new life after it was brought to Elisha. Sometimes you just got to turn to God's prophet. 
Turn to the woman of God, the man of God. Turn to your class leader. Turn to somebody and tell them what you're going through. For you see, Elijah was just simply God's representative. She brought her problems to Elisha fervently. She cried out, indicating her desperation. She conveyed her problem fully by telling her whole story to Elisha. So my question is to you, beloved, do you take your problems to your pastor, to the ministers, your class leader? Well, let's take a look at this woman's problems. Now, you think you've got some issues. You're challenging. But this woman was overwhelmed by death in the family. Her human provider, her human protector, her husband, her partner was gone. And she felt it in her soul. Have you evaluated the magnitude of human loss in your city, in your community, and even in your church? Who have you lost? And have you brought the pain of your loss to Jesus? And laid it on the Savior's feet? Oh, yes, yeah, she was overwhelmed by death in her family. But also, beloved, this woman was overwhelmed by debt in the family. I would normally ask people, do you have any debt in the family? But I don't do that anymore. I've learned better over the years under the teaching of Sister Swinton. <laughs> Stay out of other folk business unless they invite you into it. But she was overwhelmed by debt in her family. This woman had seen all of her belongings sold to meet the demands of her creditors. And now she faced the dreadful decision of having to part with her two sons. To make matters worse, all that was left in her home was a pot of oil. Now what impact does your debt have on your family? Worrying about debt won't help you solve the problem. Your job, business, or inheritance may help, but it just may not be enough. This family faced a mountain of death that left them feeling overwhelmed. But the sad news is they were also struggling beneath a mountain of doubt in the family. This family faced a mountain of doubt. They didn't trust each other. The language in verse 1 gives us divine revelation of this woman, this woman's condition in and her need for a miracle. And this is why questioning God's wisdom in allowing such an affliction to fall upon her home caused this woman to question God's wisdom and doubt his love. But she had to do as she was told. What this woman needed was out of her reach in that it was more than she could afford. Nevertheless, the woman obeyed immediately after instructions were given. And implicitly, despite the unusual instructions that she received, and step-by-step -step instructions that followed, she placed herself 
in the reach and the atmosphere of receiving a miracle. Now, perhaps this woman prayed to the Lord. Maybe she prayed, Lord, order my steps with your word, O oh Lord. Do you take God at his word this way? Do you trust him enough to follow his leading for your life? But also, this woman, she had to use what she had. It seemed silly pouring out a few ounces of oil from one vessel to another. But she used what she had. She stepped out in faith by starting small with the hope that the God who supplies all her needs would meet her and meet the needs with just a little bit of oil. And as a result of God's supply and her faith, the oil was turned into much. Do you feel sometimes, beloved, that your resources and your place in life is too small to accomplish anything? But oh, I've got good news. God delights in using little things for big purposes. Because God knows when he, when he blesses you, when he brings you out, you know who to give the glory to. And so, beloved, what you need today may be in your reach. But your access to God's abundant supply must be accessed by faith. Therefore, she had to believe for abundance. She had to prepare for abundance. Even Elisha told her to prepare for a blessing. The late president of Oral Roberts University, great evangelist, college president, had a plaque on his desk that said these words, and I quote, make no little plans here. Today we think that a church of 250 people in worship is a big church. But we think too small. We believe small. And our expectations are small. The only thing that keeps us from being lifted and blessed and, and, and receiving God's abundance are the limitations we place on God. And so this is why, to the, to the surprise of many, the triumph was wrought for Elisha. She returned to Elisha with her story of victory, imagining instead, and imagining the headlines of a local newspaper would say, company widow discovers oil. But this was a woman who was in need with all of her opportunities were out of, out of her reach. And she was a woman who placed her trust in a living God who made a way for her. So what did she learn from her experience? She learned that her faith was adequate. And it was made adequate by a God who loved her. This woman went from house to house with her small vessels until one day there was no more vessels to fill. 
Her faith proved the ability and the generosity of God. She came to understand that God was able to meet her critical need, to pay her, her debt, to pay her daily living expenses, and her collective need to provide for her family. And so, beloved, when our problems overwhelms us, we must rely on the God who promised, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. For I've got good news for you today. Your miracle is within your reach. Whether you are facing the death of a loved one, debt in your finances, or troubles, in your home. Remember today that the God who loves you is able to provide. He's able to deliver, to strengthen you, to save you, and do more for you than you could ever ask or think or even imagine. So what you need from God, beloved, God sent me by to tell you it's within your reach. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. God's about to give you a miracle. I'm so glad today that God is still in the miracle working business. For I'm convinced today that if you call on him, He'll answer. I wonder if there's a witness here today to say that God made a way where you thought there was no way. But how many of you know that he proved himself to be faithful? When the creditors were ready to, to take back what you had bought, when they were ready to put more on you than you could bear, God will step in just in the nick of time. I'm so glad that when life overwhelms me, I can take my burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Some of you walked in these doors this morning feeling overwhelmed. But God sent me to tell you, just hold on a little while longer. Help is on the way. Your victory is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your healing is on the way. All the money you need is on the way. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let the church stand. I want to extend now the invitation to Christian discipleship. Someone today is feeling overwhelmed in some area of your life. But God sent me by to let you know that he is still in the healing and delivering business. And there is no problem that is too hard for God. Let us go to God now in prayer. Lord, we come in your presence today. First, Lord, thanking you for the gift of salvation. For you said, whosoever shall confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we shall be saved. 
And so, beloved, if you've not confessed to Jesus, if you've not welcomed him, this is your moment, this is your time. Use my words, but your faith. Dear God, I come to you this morning. I'm sorry, Lord, for all of my sins. I turn away from them, and I now turn to you. Come into my life. Save me. Make me whole. Keep me, Lord, until that great resurrection day. That I may join to that innumerable host who will gather at your throne. Help me, Lord, to be in the number when they crown you, Lord of Lords. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for regulating my mind. Thank you for making a way out of nowhere. I praise you this day. And I give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. As we prepare now to worship our God through our tithes and offerings, please allow me to thank you for your faithfulness. You know, as we travel, as we go around, we see churches that are boarded up. Churches where the grass has grown up over it and nobody goes there anymore. It's sad. It hurts my heart to see how people have abandoned the house of God. They won't even go and cut the grass around it. It's just so sad. But we can give thanks here at Ebenezer because we have not abandoned God's house. The lights are still on. The air still works. The grass is still being cut because of your faithfulness. It's not anything unusual. It's just the people of God loving God and demonstrating their love through their gifts. Now, you can say you love God all day and all night, but if you ain't putting nothing in the basket, <laughs> amen. 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 Amen, somebody. Amen. I question your love because I'm convinced that everything I have, everything I've ever had, possessed comes from God. Now, he may have used other people and other organizations and work experiences to provide, but everything comes from God. And when you see giving through that lens, you'll begin to understand just how much God loves you and how much he has provided. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you as we give. Also, we want to invite now to our front those persons who are ready to be fellowshipped. Will you come forward? What a joy it is that even during this season of COVID, We're still growing. We're still adding to the numbers. And this hasn't been an easy task, given all that we've gone through. Come on, all you. These are the persons we're looking, hoping to see this morning. Nicole Washington, is she here? Somebody text her, tell her, get on, come on over here quickly. <laughs> Felicia Rooney, is she here? Oh, there she is, come on up there. And um, Karen June, is Karen here? 
She stepped out, maybe. There she is. Come on, Karen. Ann Washington. Hey, Ann. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. All right. Okay. And um, if there are any family members, if you want to come and stand behind them, you're welcome to do that. Because this is a sacred moment in the life of the church. When we connect you, not only to Ebenezer, but to the full body of Christ. And this is the avenue now through which God will use you to, ex to extend his work and his love throughout the world. All right. Any others need to come? This is it. All right. Dearly beloved members, the scriptures teach us that the church is the household of God, the body of which Christ is the head, and that it is the design of the gospel to bring together in one all who are Christ's. The fellowship of the church is the communion that its members enjoy one with another. The end of this fellowship, the maintenance of sound doctrine and of the ordinances of that power, godly admonition and discipline which Christ has committed to his church is for the promotion of holiness. It is the duty of all people to unite in this fellowship, for it is only those, the planted in the house of the Lord, will flourish in the courts of our God. Its more particular duties are to promote peace and unity, to bear one another's burdens, to prevent each other's stumbling, to seek the intimacy of a friendly society among themselves, and to continue steadfast in faith and worship of the gospel and to pray and sympathize with each other. Among its privileges are peculiar incitements to holiness, from the hearing of God's word, sharing Christ's ordinances, placing persons under the watchful care of pastors, and the enjoyment of the blessings which are promised only to those who are of the household of faith. Into this holy fellowship, these persons stand before you who have already received the sacrament of baptism and now come seeking admission. We now propose in the fear of God to question these persons as to their faith and purpose, that you may know that they are proper persons to be admitted to the church. Dearly beloved, you are now seeking the great privilege of union with the church, which our Savior has purchased with his own blood. We rejoice in the grace of God given unto you in that he has called you to be his followers. You have heard how blessed are the privileges, how solemn are the duties of membership in Christ's church. And before you are fully admitted, it is proper that you do now hear publicly, renew your vows, confess your faith, and declare your purpose by answering the following questions. Do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the solemn promise contained in the baptismal covenant, ratifying and confirming the same and acknowledging yourself and yourselves bound faithfully to observe and keep that covenant and all things contained therein? Have you saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you possess friendly feelings toward all the members of this church? I do. And for those you're struggling with, the Lord will help you. Do you believe in the doctrine of holy scriptures as set forth in the articles of religion of the African Methodist Episcopal Church? Will you be governed by the discipline of the African Methodist Episcopal Church? Hold sacred the ordinances of God and try as much as possible to promote the welfare of fellow members and the advancement of the kingdom of God. I will. Will you give of your time, talents, and money for the support of the gospel, church, poor, and various ministries of the church? Beloved, is there any reason 
why these persons should not be received into full membership. If there are no objections, we cordially welcome you into this fellowship of the Church of God, and in light of our Christian love, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And may God grant that you may be a faithful, a useful, a productive member of the church militant until you are called to the fellowship of the church triumphant, which is faultless before the presence of God. Let all of God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. I extend to you the fellowship of the believers of Ebenezer AMA Church. God bless you and may the Lord keep you. Let's give them a hand, church. Amen. After service, y'all stick around. We want to take a picture. And um, and uh, come on, look, y'all, glow closer. Come on in the picture. You may return to your seats. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> Beloved, I want you to know that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And everyone in this house, in this church today, you know somebody who needs Christ. You know someone who is outside of the church. Help us. That's our mission here at Ebenezer, to win the loss for Christ. No games, no tricks. We just want folks to know God. Amen. And to be ready when their names are called. And hear our Savior say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for your family. You know, there's seven of us in my family, seven children. And I want every one of my brothers and sisters to be in heaven. I want to see every one of them there. So begin with your family. Begin with your family. If you've got family out of church, out of the Lord, out of Christ, start there. And then reach out. Get the cousins and reach out to the neighbors, co-workers. But start at home. Be able to say, you should be able to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Don't allow folk to live in your house, eat your food, burn your electricity. Amen, somebody. And don't come to the house of the Lord. I have no connections with God. I'm the pastor of the church, but you the pastor at your house. Amen. And so my question to you, how is your, your church doing at home? You winning any souls? Anybody coming to Jesus? Coming to church? Hey, Amen. I better stop for y'all throw me out of here. Let's give this choir a hand. Come on, give them, give them some praise under the direction of Dr. Desmond Pringle. Thank you so much. Let the people of God stand. Go ahead and sing it one more time. Anointing. 
for me. Let the Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now may grace, mercy, peace, and love from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now and forevermore. seated until you are ushered. Thank you so much.